This is your complete guide to the updated Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4 and 1.4 Turbo. The Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.3 was the first 32 bit board that I covered on this channel. Since then, it's proven to be an excellent performer and very popular amongst enthusiasts as a target for an affordable mainboard upgrade. Since then, the version 1.4 and 1.4 Turbo have been released. Big Tree Tech have been kind enough to send me this, as well as some of the accessories so I could update my guide, which is what I present to you in this video. This will be eventually finding its way into another printer, but I've provided resources here for the Ender 3 because it's been requested quite a lot. There's a lot to get through, so let's get started. Let's start this video with an overview of the product in question. The Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.3 is a very popular mainboard suitable for 3D printers. It's powerful, versatile, and very low cost, and it's proven itself to be a favorite for mainboard upgrades among many 3D printer enthusiasts. This video is about its successor, the SKR version 1.4 and version 1.4 Turbo. There's also some new optional accessories we'll have a look at too. One of the main reasons someone might upgrade to these main boards is because they have an ARM 32-bit processor. If you're unsure whether your particular 3D printer will benefit from a 32-bit processor, I've got a video going through the advantages and disadvantages. Either way, it's future-proofing and you get the added bonus of easy firmware updates by putting the compiled firmware binary on an SD card and turning on the printer. No more mucking around burning bootloaders. When setting up Marlin for a 32-bit board, the software required is a little bit different, but I've got a guide on that too to bring you up to speed. The only difference between what you'll see here compared to that video is that I'm now using VS Code as my editor. You're probably wondering what's the difference between the two. Firstly, the mounting holes are exactly the same, which is handy, but if we look around the two boards, there's a number of other ports as well as jumpers that differ. For instance, the MOSFET for the fan has been greatly shrunk on the version 1.4. Something I really like, on the back, all of the pin numbers are printed on for quick reference as we're compiling firmware. Let's look at specific differences. We have two new ports and they're to suit the DC-DC mode power module, which we'll look at in more detail later on. In between the TFT and servo ports, we now have a dedicated connector for NeoPixel RGB LEDs. We have some new serial connection ports with SPI, I2C and a dedicated Wi-Fi plug to suit the new Wi-Fi module. Additional circuitry has been added around the thermistor ports. The board still supports five stepper motor drivers, but instead of there being five outputs, there is now six. That's because there are now dual Z-axis outputs. You might notice there's two fan ports on the left-hand side, but there's also an additional fan port in the corner. Only the port labeled Fan0 is connected to a MOSFET. The other three output a constant 12 or 24 volts. We have a new row of connectors to facilitate closed loop stepper motors. I've ordered some of these and I'll feature them in a future video. That means there are changes to the way we use headers to control our micro stepping, UART selection and SPI selection and we'll cover that in this video. There's quite a lot of options on the store page. So let's examine what you might want and need. Big Tree Tech supplied me with Type 8, which is the turbo with all of the accessories for this video, so let me help you understand what each one is. Firstly, the difference between standard and turbo, and it is the processor. The standard has an LPC 1768, the same as an SKR version 1.3, and the turbo has an LPC 1769, which has a clock speed of 120 MHz versus 100. Apart from that, they're exactly the same, and either option is going to be way more powerful than your standard 8-bit board. The DC-DC mode power module is only required if you're planning to run a lot of 5V devices from your main board. It already has an onboard regulator, but adding this will allow you to draw more current safely. Here are some example devices. The ones that draw the most current will be the NeoPixels and the Servo. If you're running either of these, I would recommend the DC-DC mode module. If you're just running a BL Touch, you absolutely don't need it. Next up is the Big Tree Tech Writer. This is basically a communication device. You don't need it to get the mainboard running, 
but if you were to get the Wi-Fi module, you do need it to burn the firmware to this. That will give you a wireless interface for your 3D printer that looks similar to Pronterface. I'll be covering this in a later video, so if you want Wi-Fi, buy these. If you don't, don't buy either of them. The other thing that you may need if you don't have it on hand are some stepper motor drivers. If you're not sure which one to pick, I've got a playlist linked below that goes through the differences and setup for each. Now let's look at where to get all of the resources that we might need to fit and operate this board. Big Tree Tech does a tremendous job of putting a lot of resources on their GitHub. And all of our resources for this board are still found in the SKR version 1.3 repo. You can see here we can now go into version 1.4. If we go inside hardware, we'll find things such as schematics, pin diagrams to match what's on the underside of the board, and specific diagrams for wiring up things like SPO mode on certain TMC stepper motor drivers. The best document, however, is the instruction manual, as it contains a compilation of all the most important things that you're going to need. This includes stepper motor drivers, BL touch, and some of the accessories. This should be the first place that you go when you're looking for guidance. There's also a firmware folder with firmware for the turbo and standard, but as you can see, it's a few months old, so I'm going to use the mainstream Marlin branch instead. Back in the version 1.3 folder, you'll also find a bunch of 3D printable cases to suit the ANET A6 and the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. If you are on an Ender 3, be sure to check out my all-in-one universal rear electronics case. It can support this main board, and the best part is there's now 30 remixes, so you might find something more carefully tailored to your needs. Believe it or not, the wiring is actually one of the easiest parts of converting to this board. Before we install, there's two jumpers. The first selects between external or USB power, and it should be on the right VDD in most circumstances. The second also relates to the 5 volt supply, and it should be in the lower position unless you're using the DC-DC mode module, in which case you pick it up and put it in the upper position so it lines up with the module. Now onto our install. For example, on an Ender 3, I would recommend printing out this diagram I have in the description, removing the hot glue holding on the plugs with some pliers, and then unplugging or unscrewing the wiring one by one until the board is free. You should then print this diagram where all of the labels correspond and plug everything back in as labeled. All connections go completely back in without change, apart from the three end stop plugs which no longer fit. This is an easy fix however, with the two arrows for the connectors pointing down, we take some flush cutters and trim off the left hand prong. This miter modification is all that's necessary for the plug to now insert into the end stop socket in the correct position. For this video, I'm temporarily using the standard location with a piece of cardboard underneath so the board doesn't short on the frame. For a more permanent solution, you could use my remounted case or another solution off Thingiverse to position the board securely and neatly. This board will shortly be going in my TiVo Tornado, which has an MKS Gen L, and if you're upgrading from this or an SKR version 1.3, the pin pattern is the same, so simply unplug and replug in with the new board. We're close to turning on the printer, so let's prepare some firmware for our specific printer. As we said earlier, we're going to use the vanilla or mainstream Marlin branch to base our firmware upon because it'll always be the most up to date. If you want the most most up to date, change the branch to 2.0 bug fix. After this, we can come to clone or download and download the zip. One thing that's recently changed is that the config folder is now empty. Instead, we click the link and download a zip file with all of the example configurations. Here we have my unzipped Marlin folder side by side with the zip file for the configurations. I'm going to double click to go into Marlin and then double click to go inside examples and I'm going to find my printer, in this case, Creality Ender 3. I'm now going to take all of the files in there, drag them over to the Marlin folder and when it prompts me to replace files, I'm going to click yes. This firmware is now ready to open in our editor. I have the firmware folder open in VS Code and there's three documents that we need to edit. The first is platformio.ini, the second two are found by expanding Marlin and they're configuration.h and configuration underscore adv.h. Our next two changes will be different depending on if we have a standard or a turbo board. For the standard board in platformio.ini we're going to set our default environment to LPC 1768. 
whereas for the turbo board it's going to be LPC 1769. For the standard board in configuration.h, we're going to define our motherboard as board BTT SKR V14. In the same place for the turbo board, we're going to add underscore turbo to the end of that. Our last two changes are for either version. Serial port needs to be set to minus one. Serial port two needs to be uncommented and set to zero. Finally, in configuration advanced, we're going to search for EO underscore auto and change the value from minus one to P2 underscore zero four. For now, we're just going to leave it on the standard A4988 stepper motor drivers, which means we can now go down to the bottom and click the tick to compile. In a minute or two, you should have a green success message and your firmware is compiled and ready to put onto your board. Now we can come to the .pio folder, build, LPC folder, and find the firmware .bin file, copy it, and paste it onto the SD card that came with the mainboard. Since we haven't configured their jumpers, at this stage you should leave the stepper motor drivers out before you turn on the printer. When you turn on the power, you'll notice a garbled pattern that indicates the firmware is flashing and after around 10 to 15 seconds, the printer will boot up as usual. To clear the EEPROM error, come to the menu, go to configuration, restore defaults and then store settings. It will be cleared on next boot. We need to remove and insert jumpers underneath the stepper motor drivers depending on what we've plugged in. And I'll concentrate on this instead of the firmware changes also needed because I've covered all of those in great detail before. For whatever drivers you're running, if the printer moves in the reverse direction, simply go through and change from true to false or vice versa in configuration.h. First up are the cheap and cheerful A4988 and the drop-in replacement DRV8825 LV8729, and this would also include any TMC drivers that run in legacy mode. As the board comes, the jumpers will be on the left. We need to remove them and plug them in on the right for all four. The top three, as viewed in this orientation, are our three jumpers to decide the micro stepping. I've covered this in detail in my videos, but it's really nice that they include in their instruction manual a reference table as well. Please note for any of these drivers, you're going to need to set the VREF manually. Here are my jumpers prepped for this in the right hand column for all four. And here are my drivers in place after reading the labels and lining up the ground and direction corner pins. Let's move on to drivers that connect via serial with the UART protocol. In this case, TMC 2208 and 2209. Here's a brief summary of the firmware changes if you don't want to check my other videos. Once again, the instructions are really clear here. We're going to pull out all of the jumpers from underneath and put in a single jumper, three down on the left hand side. And we're going to do that for each axis where we're connecting a stepper motor driver via UART. Here's my jumpers in action. You can see a single jumper in each slot on the left two hand columns, three down from the top. And here are some TMC 2209s in place in the correct orientation. There's an important note in the instructions. And that's it if you're using 2209s, but you're not using sensorless homing, you need to cut this pin to prevent it interfering with the end stops. This is not something to worry about for TMC 2208s. I thought I would test this and I left the pin intact and then asked the printer to home. I was about to test sensorless homing and didn't want to cut mine, so I temporarily bent it out of the way and repeated the test. Fix confirmed and here's a summary. This is only for 2209s, not 2130s, and it's only for any axis where you're using an end stop instead of sensorless homing. Before we move on, I haven't had this problem, but my patrons did and found the fix. Follow the link to this in the description if you're getting the error listed in the title. On to our SBI connection drivers, and they include the 2130 and 5160 from TMC. The firmware steps are pretty similar to the UART drivers, and remember if you want all of this explained in detail, I have specific videos on just these drivers. For the jumpers, we're going to have all four rows in, and we're going to have them on the two left hand columns with the red underneath. And of course we'll do this for each axis that we're plugging in drivers that connect via SPI. Here's the jumpers in place for me, for X, Y, Z and E, and here are some 2130s installed in the correct orientation. With any of these TMC drivers up and running, 
We can tune their configuration by coming to configuration, advanced setting, scrolling down to TMC drivers, and depending on what you enabled in the firmware, you'll have specific submenus. For instance, changing the driver current or changing the stepping mode between stealth chop or spread cycle. The slightly noisier spread cycle will be enabled by default until you change it. Just remember to save these to the EEPROM by going back to the configuration menu and scrolling down and clicking on store settings. Sensorless homing is available on 2209, 2130, 5160 and others. There's only three sections to change in the firmware and unlike the SKR version 1.3, there's no jumpers that need changing on the board. All we have to do is unplug the connectors for the end stops from the main board, in my case X and Y. Now we have to tune the sensitivity for the sensorless homing. And in the firmware there's a guide to what the numbers mean. On 2209s the value will go between 0 to 255, on anything else between 63 to minus 64. The default value of 0 was too sensitive for me and triggered a false positive, but you can fine tune this number from the TMC menu by going to sensorless homing and using trial and error. For my X axis a value of 15 was spot on, Remember every printer is different so tune it yourself and don't forget to store settings once you've found the correct sensitivity. Now let's look at some popular add-ons and accessories and how they go with this board. Firstly the Big Tree Tech TFT35, an attractive and customizable touchscreen that has the advantage that when you hold down the click knob after 3 seconds you can switch back to the usual LCD. Both the standard and E3 versions are completely plug and play. Plug in the ribbon cable exactly how it was on the standard LCD and then plug in the serial cable as shown here. Zero firmware changes required. Next the BL Touch and there are two ports built into the SKR version 1.4 for plugging it in directly. I'd recommend plugging in the servo port as you see here but I wouldn't recommend using the dedicated probe port. And that's because there's a few extra firmware changes needed to get it working. There's a few issue threads on the Marlin GitHub indicating just this. Before I made these changes I was successfully able to control the BL Touch sending manual commands from the BL Touch LCD menu but the pin wouldn't deploy when probing so I switched my wiring over to a more traditional method using the Z min end stop. Here's a pic of the connections in real life and here's some footage of it working correctly. You can do it the other way but this way is so much simpler It'll let you follow mine as well as anyone else's guides you find for setting up firmware for BL Touch without additional changes. NeoPixels are digital addressable RGB LEDs that can animate changing color. There is support for them in Marlin, in fact I've made a video guide on this before. And since this board has a dedicated port, I thought I would try them out. The wiring was really straightforward, plugging in 5 volts signal and ground from top to bottom. And the firmware change is pretty easy too. In configuration.h we uncomment that we want NeoPixel LEDs and set the pin to P1 underscore 24. With the DC DC mode module in place I fired up the printer with 10 LEDs and they cycled the startup animation. That's where I left it for here but if you're interested in learning how to configure this so your NeoPixels change color as a heated bed and then hot end heat up please check out my previous video. Finally we have some other accessories and Big Tree Tech has been busy recently producing more and more. Some of these I've ordered and I'll cover them in future videos. I know there's a lot of information here and that's why I've provided timestamps to all of the resources down below in the description. Have you used this board or are you planning to? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.